and welcome to this week's Geography at the Garibaldi School. Let's start this week as always with a little bit of feedback. So last time around you should have had a go at two exam questions. What I want you to do based on this video's feedback and on the feedback that your teacher provides you in Teams, I'd like you to make some improvements where necessary. The first six mark question was explain how energy security can be improved. Remember, this is explain. What that means is there's no AO3. It's all AO1. It's all AO2. So it's hopefully three points all explained. I'm looking for some double developments if you're going to get into level three. Double developments should always be clear to be seen. We should always see this means that. Furthermore, building on this, those kind of connecting sentences. What you should have looked at is how energy security can be increased so what are the problems we face and really kind of what are the solutions i'd like to have seen a definition of energy security as a starting point i think it's always useful to define the key terms in a question to show the examiner that you are confident with what the question is asking you then you really needed to talk about how we can increase energy security and there are three real ways that you could probably consider one was to talk about renewables and this is quite straightforward so how can we increase our energy security well actually more wind turbines more solar and the thing about renewables that increases your energy security is they never run out they're infinite so we can use wind and we can use solar and we can use wave and this should increase our energy security. The second way was more controversial. It was to consider about maybe the potential of using nuclear. Could we use nuclear energy to increase our energy security? And again, that would be to think about the way that nuclear power is created and what contribution it would make to your energy security. The third way was about using other forms of fossil fuels that maybe we haven't found yet or maybe we use and we've got a plentiful supply so you looked at natural gas for those who want to do a bit of extra research that you could look at uh, Canadian tar sands and unconventional forms of fossil fuels ideally though the main way and we're going to cover this in this lesson that we can increase our energy security is to use less of it how can we stop wasting energy so that actually we don't need as much and therefore uh, we are more secure? And this happens to apply to you at home. And it actually applies to industry uh, as well. So what you should be looking for here is to give yourselves three bits of AO1. Have you made three different points in that mark scheme? Have you got at least three bits of AO2? And preferably at least one of your points needs to be double developed to get into that detailed level three answer. Pause the video, mark your answer, improve it where need be. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully uh, you've made your improvements there. The second question was, using an example you've studied, examine how the extraction of a fossil fuel creates both advantages and disadvantages. This should have been easy because you had all the information in front of you. Your fossil fuel that you should have talked about should have been gas. However, it's a really lovely question this because if you get into that exam and you can't remember uh, that we did anything about gas, you'd still get marks if you talked about oil or if you talked about coal. So, and you know some of the advantages and disadvantages of these fossil fuels. Again, for the detailed answer, I'm looking for three bits of AO1 all followed up with an AO2, but some of it to be double developed. And basically down the side, I've given you some of the advantages and disadvantages. You could talk about how it creates jobs, how it encourages new industries, uh, it different accesses to energy, helps develop local infrastructure, economic development. But then there are disadvantages. Disturbance of local communities may affect other industries like tourism, traffic congestion, destruction of habitats, pollution issues, local conflicts, health issues. So you're, you're talking about a whole range of things. The most obvious problem with using fossil fuels is its link to the advanced greenhouse effect and climate change.
that should be something that every single one of you should have talked about. The most obvious advantage is that we already have all the infrastructure ready to use. It's therefore, it's relatively cheap for us to use coal, oil and gas. Again, pause the video, make your improvements as you need and come back to me when you've finished. Okay, so while well doing that, hopefully you've all now got a better understanding about how we can try and increase our energy security and how maybe a fossil fuel can be a part of that with an advantage and a disadvantage considered. Today's learning is all about how can we reduce the demand for resources and achieve a sustainable energy future. So what we'll ask you to do is maybe do a little bit of a reflection of your way that you live. I'm actually to think about what's meant by you as an individual living a sustainable lifestyle to assess maybe do you do do you live in a sustainable lifestyle or not to understand how you can do it and then maybe consider how this applies to some examples that we have already looked at in different units if we think about the main causes of our resource use and the therefore energy consumption it's pretty obvious Cars and transport, and planes and transport, planes for things like food miles and cars for things like uh, getting to work and back or going on holidays. We've thought about domestic use, so one of the main reasons why we use uh, energy or resources is in our own houses. We use gas to cook with, uh, we import things from places like China, we use significant amounts of water through the day. The shoe is not just there to look beautiful, but it's also to represent our consumerist attitudes. We buy lots and lots of things, often things we don't really need. So if we start thinking about how we use all of our energy, and you could take a look around your house now, you're probably watching this video either on a phone or a laptop, and that's using energy. You'll have had a hot shower, that's used energy. You'll cook some food, that uses energy. Your TV, have you got something left on? Have you got a radio on? All these things in your house. We also know that industry is a main user of energy. Factories that burn fossil fuels that create the products that we buy. And equally things like agriculture which uses energy. And some of that agriculture requires food miles to import our foods from abroad. So if these are all the things that we use, how can we actually become more efficient? How can we use less? Well, there's lots of different ways and here's just a few ideas. We can buy less. Don't have a shoe cupboard that looks like that. But the same applies with all the things you buy, whether it be video games that you never play, uh, T-shirts, jumpers, clothes, whether it be uh, things that you thought you desperately wanted and then you've had them and you've probably never taken them out of a box. We could use public transport. We all know about public transport. We could have things in our house that use less energy, energy-saving light bulbs. We could turn things off even at the switches when we're not using them. Walk places, cycle places. Um, and then there are other things to do with things like the food that we use. We could buy locally grown food or locally bred British meat rather than imported foods. Although we have looked at this before and we know that that has its disadvantages too. The green arrows represent recycling and all of you hopefully do recycle at home with your recycling bin. How we get this to all happen, though, is through three main things. The first is education. This doesn't just mean in schools. This means in wider society. So changing governments, businesses and individuals' minds on issues like recycling and how to use resources efficiently and not using things that damage the environment is really important. The second way is conservation. This means to share out the resources in a fair and reasonable way which doesn't damage habitats or the environment so we conserve or protect those environments. We don't use it all at once kind of idea. And the third way is recycling. And there's some statistics there for how recycling can play a part. So 70% less energy is used to recycle paper than it is to make it from new. 80% of your bin can be recycled. One recycled can power a TV for three hours. So all of it adds up and all of it contributes to us being more sustainable. So here's your point of reflection. 
You have a picture of me in the middle with my homegrown carrots, a way that I was being sustainable. But what I want you to do in your booklet, I want you to consider those three questions. How do you live a sustainable lifestyle already? So what things do you do that you think mean that you are living a sustainable lifestyle? The second box, probably a little bit more difficult to admit. What are the things that you do that are unsustainable? If you've got a few of those examples for the third box, what could you do to make yourself more sustainable with that? So what ideas have you got? Pause the video, fill that out. Be interesting to hear back from you on some of your thoughts about whether you do or don't live a sustainable lifestyle already. Okay, welcome back. I would imagine that you've got quite a large box for how your life is unsustainable at the moment, but I would also imagine that you can probably make some very quick changes or simple changes that would um, make your life more sustainable. So maybe now is the time to start thinking about how you do that. So, reduce your energy usage. Energy conservation, don't use so much. But what can we remember about other ways we can do this? I'm going to let you fill these three boxes out, but without seeing any more. So you're going to have to pause the video in a minute. First, you want to think about housing. How can we make houses more sustainable so that they use less energy? Here, you need to think about bed Z. We looked at this when we looked at urban areas. How is that sustainable? The second thing is transport. What can you remember about London's transport infrastructure and transport policies that made it sustainable? Again, we looked at this in urban areas. Third box is reducing demand. That energy conservation that was on the previous slide. What can we do? No right or wrongs. Fill as much of this out as you can before we move on. So pause the video. Do the work. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully, you've managed to find somewhere in that memory of yours the information about bed Z and sustainable transport. In terms of bed Z, there's a lots of different ideas. Remember, it was the Beddington Zero Emissions uh, area in London, and the houses were completely and utterly sustainable. They have things like their own solar panels or own little wind turbines that created their own energy. They had windows that were triple glaze to trap more heat in so that you didn't need to have the heating on quite so high loft insulation so nothing escapes from the loft so actually again you can keep your uh, thermostat on a lower temperature they had things like uh, newer boilers that used less energy but also at beds that they had things that were great like uh, they collected or harvested rainwater so that you didn't need to use as much water for things like watering gardens they had um, air funnels that let, let natural air blow through the house which created a cooling effect on hot days so no need for any air conditioning or anything like that in terms of transport well it's about using less of it and if we think back to uh, transport for london we talked about that integrated transport system integrated meaning that everything was kind of connected together you should have talked about the Barclays bikes. There's a good example of how to get people out of cars or even out of buses but onto those Barclays bikes. You might have talked about using green buses, buses that produce zero emissions. You might then have talked about the Oyster card and how that allowed you to access the tube and buses so that you could use this card to get onto all of your transport at the same time. You might even have thought about the congestion charging and the high emission zones where you had to pay more money to drive your car in which reduces people's needs to get into their cars you might have thought about nottingham you might have thought about things like park and ride which we have on the edge of the nottingham city where you can get your bus or your car down to uh, the park and ride park up and then jump on the tram so there's a lot of ways in which transport can have an impact in reducing energy use. The third way was energy conservation and, and kind of 
reducing the demand and we've talked a lot about this already. Cutting down the amount of energy you use, lowering the temperature on your thermostat in your house by one degree. Buying recycled products, recycling yourself, buying less products, turning things off when you uh, aren't using them. They're all important ways to conserve energy. It means that there's more energy left. So to finish, this week's six mark question. Again, it's explain. It's just AO1 and AO2. I want to see double developments. Explain how different energy strategies can be used to make energy supplies more sustainable. Think about all the things we just talked about. And I'll start next week's video with feedback on this question. So until then, take care and work hard. Bye-bye.